And doesn't it feel good to be back with the Law of Cosines? Well, it's our second day using the Law of Cosines, and today we're going to focus strictly on finding angles. So yesterday's video was all about finding a side, and you'll recall we always found this side, whether it was A, B, or C. And today we're going to find the angle, which is just a little trickier. So take good notes and keep your calculator handy. Before we dive right in, I just want to remind you that you use the Law of Cosines when you have three sides and one angle. So that side angle side is a big hint that you should be using the law of cosines. And a reminder to our formula, what you're finding comes first. Okay, what you're finding comes first. And that first and last letter are always going to match up. First and last letter match up. All right, let's dive right in. Example one, three sides of a triangle measure 20, 30, and 40 meters. Find the largest angle to the nearest degree. All right, so let's go ahead and make a quick sketch. We know our three sides are 20, 30, and 40. And the question wants the largest angle. Well, where the heck do you find the largest angle? So let's make a note again. That largest angle is across from the largest side. And I'm gonna say across slash opposite. We've been using that word opposite a lot from the largest side. And the same works for the smallest angle. The smallest angle is across from the smallest side. So basically, look at your three sides. I would say 40 is the largest. That means you want to find the angle across from 40. All right, so remember, what you're finding comes first. But we have to start with a side. So if you want, you know, if you're really into the letters, I can label them A, B, and C. And I'm finding angle B, which means the letter B is going to come first. B squared equals the other two letters, A squared plus C squared, minus 2 times those same two letters, cosine of B. I just want to remind you that first and last letter have to match up. Now, like I said, this math is going to be a little uglier today. Plugging in the formula is fine, but it's the math behind it. So you'll notice that this time we are finding this angle B here. So when I plug these in, I should have, and watch the parentheses, 40 squared, 20 squared plus 30 squared minus 2 times 20 times 30 times the cosine of B. Now, I can't stress enough. If you've got another color, marker, something, this is the big deal. This cosine of B okay, is attached only to the stuff it's sitting next to. Okay, So I'm going to kind of bracket it in. Those terms are stuck together. You cannot break them up. These are all being multiplied together. So you have to do this one in steps. You cannot just go to your calculator like we did yesterday because the variable is not by itself. It's attached to all this junk. So this one's a little more tedious. You've actually got to take your time and you know be very careful with each term. So here's what I mean. 40 squared whoops, should be 1,600 equals... 20 squared would be 400 plus 900 minus. Now you can multiply these because remember, these are all attached together. Keep these terms together. And I'm leaving the minus sign, so don't include that. So I'm doing 2 times 20 times 30, and I get 1,200 cosine b. All right, if you've got that color, I want you to mark it again. This cosine b is still attached to somebody. It is attached to the 1,200. Bracket those at the bottom there. You can't break those up yet. So basically, if I want to get this term by itself, I have to carefully get rid of these two terms here. All right, and I just have to, you know, add them and subtract them over. So I'm going to say I have 1,600 equals, this group is together, but I can add these two. So 400 plus 900 gets me 1,300 minus this 1,200 cosine b. Take that marker and keep those together. So I can't break that section up, but I can subtract this 1,300 over. And 1,600 minus 1,300 is 300 equals, I still have negative 1,200 cosine b. Okay. Now, in order for me to get cosine b alone, 
So now that we're down to it, I want to get this term by itself. All I would do is divide both sides by negative 1,200. And on this side, I get negative 0.25. Now, if that's an ugly decimal, I'd probably store it. Equals cosine b. Okay. Now, I'm not done because I haven't got b by itself. And here comes that inverse trig. When you want to solve for an angle, remember, you have to take the inverse of both sides. Okay. And the whole point of taking the inverse is to kill the cosine. That zaps those two out. And again, straight to your calculator. I get an answer of 104.47, and, oh, I can't remember what it said around to, nearest degree, I would say that's 104 degrees for angle B. Okay, so the setup's the same, it's just taking your time trying to solve for B. Let's try another one. All right, example two. In a rhombus with a side of 24, so let's stop there and draw a picture. Remember, a rhombus is like a square that's been tilted. And what's nice about the rhombus, because it's like a square, all the sides are congruent. So I can label everybody 24. The longer diagonal is 36. So again, you have two diagonals that go across. And I think you can easily see one looked a lot longer than the other. So draw the longer one in, and I'll label that 36. It says find to the nearest degree the larger angle of the rhombus. Well, remember the larger angle is across from the larger side. So if I look at the sides of my triangle, I have 24, 24, 36. Clearly 36 is the largest, so the angle opposite is the one we're looking for. So again, I'm just going to pull it out uh, and see if that makes it easier. So I've got 24, 24, 36, and I'm looking for this angle here. Now, I'm going to do this one without throwing letters on it, and you're more than welcome to put A, B, and C on it. But I just like to say, again, what I'm finding comes first. And again, this is law of cosines. If I try to do law of sines, I have side and angle opposite, but I don't have enough information to do anything else. So I've got side, angle, side, which is my law of cosines. So I'm finding this x, and that's across from the 36. So that's telling me to start with 36 equals... Your other two sides, 24 squared plus 24 squared minus 2 times those two sides you just used, 24 times 24, and then the cosine of the angle I'm finding, which is x. Okay, so again, if you wanted to throw letters on there, go for it. See if you can do it without the letters. These two go together, so they go first and last. The other ones go in the middle, the other sides and we should be good to go. So get that extra color pen and bracket this side in. Remember, that is attached together. You cannot break that up. They're one tag team. Don't break them up. So you're just going to have to evaluate each one singly in your calculator. So I've got 36 squared is, whoops, 1296 equals 24 squared is 576 plus 576 minus now these guys are all attached together, so they go in your calculator together. That gets me 1152, and then I've got cosine x. So again, I'm going to bracket that piece in that's attached to cosine. And just a little bracket underneath will do it. You can't break those guys up. But what you can do is add these two terms together. I've got 11.52 minus 11.52 cosine x. Now again, bracket this piece in. Okay, You cannot subtract those two because this piece is attached to this one. So you have to bring this 11.52 here to the other side. And I've got 144 equals negative 11.52 cos x. Okay, so my goal is to get cos x by itself, so I'm going to divide now both sides by 1152, or negative 1152, and I get negative 0.125 equals cos x. And because I'm finding an angle, okay, angle means inverse. If you want the angle, you're finding the inverse. I'm going to carefully take the inverse of both sides. I'm going to store this into b as well. 
So I'm going to say cos inverse of B equals cos inverse of cos X. Those cancel. And I get an angle of 97 degrees. All right, well, hopefully we're doing okay. We've made it to the last example for the night. Um, the question is, find the smallest angle. So just a refresher, the smallest angle should be across from the smallest side. So if you compare these three, I would definitely say the smallest side is 9. So I should be looking for this angle. So again, um, I don't have enough for law of sines, side opposite an angle. Um, there's not enough information, so it's got to go cosines. And what you're finding comes first. That's the whole key. I'm finding this angle here, which means these two come first and last. And you got to start with the side. So I'm going to say 9 squared equals your other two sides, 12 squared plus 18 squared minus 2 times 12 times 18 times the cosine of x, or I could say c in this case. Um, and if you've got that, you've got half the battle done for you. It's just setting that formula up. And just keep saying what you're finding comes first, and these two here, first and last, have to match up. They have to be the same letter. So I'm just going to run through and remind you that this section is glued together. Okay, so you can't break that up. So as I go through each one, 9 squared is 81 plus 144, I'm sorry, equals 144, plus 18 squared is 324, minus, that junk can get multiplied together, 2 times 12 times 18 makes 432, cosine, we'll call it C. So again, I just want to reiterate that this 432 is attached to the cosine C, and all I'm going to do is add some pieces together here. I've got 144 plus 324 gives me 468 minus 432 cosine C. Again, I want to reiterate those are attached together. Can't break them up. So I'm going to have to subtract the 468 over. 81 minus 468 gets me negative 387 equals negative 432 cosine C. Now, to get cosine C by itself, hopefully you're, you're with me or ahead of me, divide by the 432. This gets me cosine C. And this was some ugly number, 0.8958, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to store that in alpha B. And I got my cosine C. And in order to get rid of cosine or kill this cosine, I just have to take the inverse of both sides. Okay, so again, anytime you want to find an angle, that's the inverse button. And I get an angle of 26 degrees. And there you have it, the last day of our Law of Cosines practice. So we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great night.